don't know. It looks like we had a casualty. The tip of my mister, it shot off on this one. Yep, there it is, right here. Which means it flooded these. Uh, these were the Sunflower Steve Sunflowers I just sowed with you guys. Which looks like some are starting to pop up. So that's really cool. But um, I need to go in and attach that. So <laughs> that doesn't happen again. So the cool weather that was promised to me was a lie. Oh, I'm just talking to them. Um, so we were supposed to have a massive cool front. And instead what happened is a week in the hundreds. So it's actually really, really toasty out here. Um, but that's okay. Oh my word. My mister broke off. Huh? My mister broke off and flooded everything. Alrighty. I didn't actually put these together. Um, so trying to figure out how they go. What's up friends and family? How's it going? I'm out in the greenhouse today starting our first round of fall things. So if you guys remember uh, last week when I started the sunflowers I had my little trusty note uh, notebook piece of paper. I still haven't went in and plugged any of these things into our Excel spreadsheet because we are so much in the harvest of the summer season too and at some point that is something you are going to have to largely consider. Um, a lot of our production is going down. A lot of those tomato plants and cucumbers need to be ripped up. We need to replace, um, you know, and do a second succession. And if you're growing out in a raised bed, you're probably noticing the same thing. It's getting super hot and your beans aren't starting to produce. Or maybe you've got your tomato plants that have blossom and rot or, you know, powdery mildews on your squash and zucchini or whatever it may be. At some point, if you're wanting to do a fall round, you are going to have to rip up those plants that are on the decline, but you'd still get a few stragglers here and there. You're going to have to make the call. You're going to have to rip them, uh, rip them up. If they don't have any sort of disease, you can compost them. I do recommend burning any diseased plant. You don't want to take that and leach it into your compost pile. And so I know within the next week or so, I'm going to have to be ripping some things out. Um, and so I need to go ahead and get um, all my other seeds started. So we kind of have these in two different segments. I'll be starting things this week. Um, and then I've got, you know, between the 15th of July and the 15th of August, we'll do another massive uh, wave of our brassicas. And then September 1st, we'll start direct seeding all of our carrots, all of our radishes, all of our beets, all of our root crops. Um, and then every single week, we'll start a succession of baby greens and spinach. So I brought my trays out here. I think what I'm going to do, because today I'm starting another round of Katrina cucumbers, I'm starting the Grand Marshall uh, Determinate Tomatoes. Those are both going to go out into the high tunnel. And then I am starting some summer and winter squashes. So I think I'm going to um, color coordinate these with my trays um, because I think that's fun. So I'm going to start all my tomatoes in the yellow, all my cucumbers in the green. Um, my squashes will be like summer squashes can be pink, winter squashes can be purple. 100% um, not necessary, um, but it's fun. So I'm going to take a second and kind of sort these trays out real quick. <laughs> All right, now that I have color coordinated all of my pots, uh, just a reminder, this is the summer solstice collection that I did with Bootstrap Farmer. And it is a collection inspired by the blooms of summer. It is a limited edition. So if you guys want to hop on this and grab some of these cool spring summer colors, um, I'll have a link down in the description below. They are two and a half inch pots. Um, you can buy just the single colors too, which is really nice. Um, 
So let's get busy. I'm going to be filling these up. I am doing a mix of the Happy Frog and then a, um, it's called like Grower's Professional Seed Sturdy Mix. So I've got it mixed up over here in my trough. I'm going to go in, fill all these trays, and then we can get started. All right, so I am using these inserts from Bootstrap Farmer. Um, I've got the bottom tray too. These are really nice. These two and a half inch pots just sit in them. And that way, if you're like moving them a lot, as far as like to water them or you're trying to rotate them somewhere or whatever reason just to even so that they don't move around and fall i do like to get these inserts it makes it a lot easier um anything that i mentioned in the video today you will find links for all of them down in the description so make sure you're checking that out but this will save you so much time in the long run i can't tell you how many times i've filled a massive tray and then i have them toppling over and so now i just don't have to worry about that it makes it a lot easier Alrighty, so now i have got my trays filled up um, and what i'm going to do and so this is a good way too if you do have color coordinated pots to where you can avoid buying labels and um, there's a few different things you can do if you're seeding just one whole tray of the same thing you can take uh, like painters tape and a marker and just write like stick some tape on the side of your tray and i could put katrina cucumbers in the date i started um so that's one way to avoid like having to buy all those planters those little um plant markers and then like using a bunch of them or what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up the notes app on my phone i'm going to put green pots cucumbers blue pots tomatoes and it automatically saves today's date and i'm going to put the number that i started so i'm starting uh, 12 cucumbers and i am starting 16 tomatoes and so now I've got this record on my phone and it says July 19th at 1259. This is the note I made and I will do this with all of it. So that is one thing that is nice if you're going to do these color coordinated pots. Uh, just a way to avoid that. Now with planting for the fall garden, there are, there are a lot of things you can direct seed. Um, you don't need a greenhouse um, even if you are starting some of these things. So let that be an encouragement. Uh, there's a lot of things like if you're doing a second round of beans, you can direct seed that. Um, if you were doing cucumbers, you can direct seed cucumbers. Um, technically, you can direct seed uh, tomatoes. I've never done it. I've always wanted to get the leg up, um, which is one reason that you would start seeds instead of direct seeding them is because it allows you to start ahead of time. So I would mentioned earlier that the things in my high tunnel are wrapping up, but I do still have a couple weeks left on that. And so I can be growing out the replacements in here in the greenhouse for the next two weeks. And then when they are completely done, I'll rip them out, amend the bed, and then immediately replant these. Um, and so that is something that is um, just it, it's really beneficial to be able to have um, that leg up so we've got the Katrina cucumber here and um, this is an F1 hybrid from uh, Johnny selected seed I really really love this cucumber it's self-pollinating um, it produces a ton perfect for like pickling fermenting um, just so so good Alrighty, just like that, I've got them sewed. I like to keep all of my seeds in these photo organizers, um, and then they come in this big like handheld binder, and it's really, really easy. You can even go through if you're like really feeling uh, like you're wanting to get organized, and you can label the sides of them, which I have done. It's a fun little winter project. I actually did an entire video on organizing your seeds. I'll find it and stick it right up here um, and in the description, but these are relatively cheap, and it is a good way to just keep all your stuff organized. So now I'm going to go through and just lightly push that, uh, that seed in here. For the cucumbers, I only had nine, so I had to adjust my notes accordingly, which is just fine. Um, and I only planted one seed. For the tomatoes, I planted two per container. And the reason that I did that is because I didn't remember how old these seeds were. I don't think they're super old, um, but I had plenty enough seed to spare. 
And so I just, I did, just to make sure. So I am gonna show you guys these misters. Ever since we had them installed in the greenhouse, it has made my life so much easier. So I cannot wait to kind of show you. I know we touched on it uh, earlier in the video, but to kind of explain to you what it is doing and how it has been such a lifesaver for me as far as like time management, um, I'm excited to dive into that. All right, so one thing to be mindful of when starting seeds in the summertime is your seeds drying out, which is very much a possibility. Um, we have a shade cloth on our seed starting tunnel and it is still really, really hot in here. And so it does not take much for your seeds to dry out, especially if you're not using bigger containers and you're using soil blocks. Um, like I know that the soil block mini, the handheld mini is something I use a lot um, in the winter to start seeds, but you will not catch me doing it um, in the summertime because I'm not as diligent about watering and they dry out so quickly. And if that seed germinates, but then it, it dries out, it kills it and you've got to start over again. So what we have here are these misters that are over our table and we're gonna essentially kind of zone our greenhouse. So we're gonna have a section over here where it's like uh, supplies and soil. So like trays and soil. Then we'll have a table where we're seeding and then we'll have a couple different zones like the back half will be our watering zone and they'll go off. And so these um, my friend put together for me. So all of these parts were bought at Lowe's. Um, I'm sure you could buy them, obviously Lowe's, Home Depot, some sort of supply store. And essentially the, the top brace of our greenhouse, so it peaks like this and we've got a middle brace, um, is what these are zip tied to. And then we have our water hose in here with the irrigation pipe kind of ran up and connected. Now I did not put this together, this is not a video explaining the misters, I can I can schedule that into content, but I don't know enough about how all of this uh, got put together because I wasn't here when it was installed. Um, but what I do know is that we have these misters uh, kind of hanging, which I can show you guys that better. So you all can see that it's attached up there. That's where it's fed all the way down to the timer. And then they just kind of hang low. And what happens here is we have these on a mister to where it is misting overhead. Um, and it's going off for about five minutes ever so often, whatever the timer is split to. Um, and so it's really, really nice. So instead of coming out here and my seedlings are dried out, I don't have to worry about it. I will manually turn the timer on once I get done seeding. That way it missed everything well. And then it'll just be set up on that timer. These are the type of automations that you can put on your farm and you just do not realize how much time you are putting back into your pocket until you do something like this. Same with like having all your raised beds or your in-ground gardening set up on drip irrigation with automatic timers. That is gonna save you so much time and give you some time freedom to put in other things. And so the time that I'm spending watering all these seedlings several times a day, it's time I can be creating content and sharing with you guys what it is that I'm starting, what it is that you can be starting. So these have made my life so much easier. So thankful to have them in. Um, now we're gonna start on our winter squashes. I'm gonna show you guys what I am, what I'm kind of thinking. Got some more squash in my pocket. So we're gonna do some funky varieties because why not? Um, these are things that like I'm eating a lot at is like the base of a meal. Uh, so we're gonna kind of go overboard <laughs> on the winter squashes. We have this buttercup here, um, which is really interesting. When I was reading the back of the seed packet, it says that it's a great replacement for sweet potatoes. Now, while I don't mind eating sweet potatoes, I actually love sweet potatoes, we don't grow sweet potatoes. So if I can grow this and it can be a replacement of something that I'm having to buy, I love the idea of that. So that's the buttercup squash. I'm going to be growing a ton of this honey nut squash, which is a, a different type of variety of butternut. Apparently it has a sweeter, richer um, note to it than the butternut. We've got our spaghetti squash. Here is a pink banana jumbo squash from Haas Tools that looked really cool. I'm growing some pumpkins for my pigs. <laughs> so we're growing a whole bunch of pumpkins to be able to feed the pigs and then some acorn squash. So as far as like the acorn and the buttercup, 
Um, some of those unique varieties, I'm probably only gonna be growing, you know, starting six or seven of those different varieties, but the spaghetti squash and the butternut squash, the things that I am buying and sourcing out and that are really stable once you brought inside, I'll be starting probably 20 to 30 seeds of those um, because that's the cool thing is they'll produce a whole bunch and then they store on your cabinet and your root cellar or whatever for a really, really long time. And you can just ensure that you're gonna have food yield fresh from your garden, fresh from your backyard uh, in the dead of winter and it just it feels good alrighty now while I did want to color coordinate and I was able to do that since I'm growing so many different varieties of these different squashes I can't just say oh all pinks gonna be this all purples gonna be this so I am gonna have to grab some of these plant markers and mark them up. Uh, squash is one of those things too that you can totally direct seed so say maybe you didn't so maybe you didn't do a summer garden and you're just wanting to really emphasize on the fall garden. You can take these squash seeds and you can go throw them on an arch trellis, um, the smaller varieties. You can go throw them in a patch on the ground. Um, squash are pretty resilient. We've got an entire patch beside our high tunnel that we were preparing for sunflowers that we're actually gonna turn into our winter squash patch. <laughs> and then I'm going to be sprinkling squash and beans all throughout the raised bed garden. Um, as I am taking off um, summer squashes while we're getting rid of our first round of beans um, and then while some of our flowers are wrapping up we'll just replace a lot of that with root vegetables and these squashes. So I got these seeded. We have got the buttercup, the pink banana jumbo, the acorn squash, and the spaghetti squash. And then I ran out of trays that I had filled. So I still got more spaghetti squash that I want to sow, that honey nut, and then the traditional butternut. Um, and I'll be growing about 30 of each of those, which is a lot. Um, and so I could do these in soil blockers, but I'm not going to. Even with the mister setup, it would help me kind of maintain those soil blockers better. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is go grab a 72 cell tray from Bootstrap um, that's going to be a bit smaller uh, than these. So it's going to use less soil and then I can just kind of have one whole flat um, of squash. And then I just know that that whole flat is going to be the butternut. I'll have one whole flat, um, you know, of the spaghetti squash. And it'll just make it a bit easier on myself. All right, so I'm going to get myself and my camera out of the way. And then we're going to turn these misters on manual so that they go ahead and just soak all of our seedlings that we just started. All right, you guys, that's a wrap for what I started today on the farm. Just be thinking about those fall gardens. If you are wanting to go grow food throughout the fall and the winter, you most certainly can, and I promise, uh, for a lot of us, it's a lot more enjoyable than coming out here and sweating our butts off too. So there's so many things you can be growing. We have all of those summer squashes, but then there's that whole winter squash family too that have, you know, really long shelf stable, um, you know, life. And we can just do a lot with those. There's our second rounds of beans. We can be thinking about those winter brassicas. Um, we can be thinking about doing those root vegetables again. So really the sky's the limit as far as what you can be starting right now and growing throughout the fall and the winter. But thanks for hanging out with me in my green house today. I'll talk to you soon.